Hi, everybody. This is Jimmy DeYoung. Welcome to Prophecy Today video. There could be a second Jewish state in the Middle East, and it could happen very soon. The stage is set as the Israeli Prime Minister sets in place a settlement freeze. Prime Minister Netanyahu calling for a 10-month freeze on any construction in the Jewish settlements in the area of Judea and Samaria. Well, that's the issue for Prophecy Today video this week. We're going to talk with a couple of correspondents. You need to hear what they have to say, and I'll take a look at the book as it relates to the possibility of a second Jewish state. For example, Dave Dolan is our man in Jerusalem. David, will this announcement by Prime Minister Netanyahu of a 10 month freeze on the Jewish settlement construction bring down his government? It doesn't look like it will cause the collapse of his government, mainly because he's making clear that it's a temporary freeze. It isn't a permanent halt. It's got a time frame to it. It's designed for very specific purposes, and that is to get the Palestinians back to the peace table. Uh, that move is strongly supported by the Labor Party and many inside the Likud. Danny Dion is the man who is the chairman of the Association of Jewish Settlers. Danny, let's talk bottom line. What is the principle that's being destroyed by Prime Minister Netanyahu and his announcement of this settlement freeze? The very sad principle that was said here is that something is wrong with the Jew that builds his home in Judea and Samaria. Something is wrong, I would say, even unlawful with the, my daughter's will to build her home in Male Shomron, the community she grew in. That something is wrong with the a Jew's desire to build his home in, in, in his ancient homeland, in the most important parts of his ancient homeland. That is the very, the gravest problem I see with this resolution. Itamar Marcus heads up Palestinian Media Watch. Itamar, how are the Palestinians reacting to this announcement by Prime Minister Netanyahu? They've already rejected it, they said, because building is still going on in Jerusalem because 3,000 houses that are already being built can continue being built. I mean, it would be a, 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 impossible for any government to stop houses in the middle that have already been approved, that people have already invested tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in, and yet the Palestinian Authority has, has used that as an excuse for not coming back to the negotiation table. So no sooner had the announcement been said than the Palestinians rejected it. Rob Congdon watches the European Union for us. He has just recently been in Europe, his ear to the ground, listening to what the leaders there have to say. Rob, what is the reaction to the European Union? Do they have an interest in the settlement freeze as well? They will see this temporary freeze as a positive step and allow them to uh, at least believe uh, terms of the populace that they are moving toward a peace solution. So I think from all standpoints, things will continue as they have, and uh, it'll be viewed very positively. Those men giving us the latest information as it relates to the announcement by Prime Minister Netanyahu of a settlement freeze for 10 months, moratorium on all construction in the Jewish settlements pressure from the United States on the Israeli Prime Minister to implement a freeze has uh, caused uh, the stage, I believe, to be set for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. If you can take a few moments, you need to think through with me a couple of things. In this recent announcement by the Israeli Prime Minister on the 10-month freeze of construction in the area of Judea and Samaria by the Jewish settlers, it's caused an uproar among the over 500,000 Jewish settlers living in what they claim is God-given land. I said that a moment ago. The Obama administration has been pressuring the Israeli government to not only stop construction in the settlements, but they also say that the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria are illegal and they must be evacuated. Well, the Jewish settlers are organizing Danny Dion brought that to our attention. They're going to do what they need to do to rebuke their own prime minister uh, and, in fact, to reverse his decision, if they possibly can, on the freeze and then to rekindle an effort for independence. 
let me let me tell you what I'm talking about when I say independence. Bible prophecy speaks of a second Jewish state near the end of days in what we know as Israel today. You have the single Jewish state, but the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 15 to 23, says there will be a second Jewish state in that area of Judea and Samaria, and uh, the prophet speaks about it uh, in another place, chapter 35 and verse 10. And let me talk about chapter 37 first, then we'll get to chapter 35 and some of the other ancient Jewish prophets that bring this to our attention. In Ezekiel chapter 37, it talks about the prophet being told by God to take two sticks. I'm paraphrasing what the passage says. You can read it later. But he says, take two sticks, and on one stick, write Israel, on the other stick, write Judah. Put the two sticks in your hand, and while they are in your hand, the two sticks will become one. Many have told me what that's talking about is that the ten lost tribes of Israel will finally come back to Israel and be a part of Judah, which was the two tribes in the south, Benjamin and Judah itself. You remember when they divided back in 1 Kings chapter 11 after the 40-year reign of King Solomon before Rehoboam, the son of King Solomon, could take charge. Jeroboam, an adversary to the king, took ten tribes and went into the north. They were in the north. They were known as Israel. The two tribes in the south were known as Judah. And then, of course, the Assyrians took the ten tribes of the north, Israel, into captivity. Then later, the Babylonians took the two tribes, Judah, into captivity as well. But when the Babylonians took uh, the control of the world under Nebuchadnezzar, they brought everybody back together. So thus, all 12 tribes were together once again in the Babylonian captivity. In fact, the book of Ezra tells us that when those 50,000 Jews went back to rebuild the temple under Zerubbabel's leadership, there were people from all 12 tribes. And then in, verse, in chapter 6 of Ezra, when they had the dedicatory service for that temple, all 12 tribes were there. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, when Jesus sent the disciples out, he said, don't go to the Gentiles, but go to the whole house of Israel. On the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 and verse 5, there were Jews from every nation gathered in Jerusalem. All 12 tribes are in Israel today. So this Ezekiel passage, chapter 37, verses 15 to 23, when you talk about the two sticks, that will be two Jewish states, Israel and Judah, putting them in your hand, becoming one. That is when they come back together. And verse 23 of chapter 37 of Ezekiel says, when Jesus Christ comes back, that's when all 12 tribes will once again be reunited. You know, Ezekiel in chapter 35, verse 10, is talking about judgment upon the Palestinians, the Edomites of biblical times. In verse 10 it says, you have tried to take these two states. That's talking about the two Jewish states. Jeremiah mentions that at the time of the end, when the Messiah has returned to the earth, Jeremiah 3.18 says these two states will come back together. Malachi in chapter 2 says God hates that which has been put asunder. What he has joined together do not divide. He's put the nation of Israel together, uh, but the Jews are going to separate and become two Jewish states according to Bible prophecy. What we have been talking about on this broadcast today is putting in place everything for all of these prophecies to be fulfilled. The Palestinians want to take Israel. They want to take all of the land. And they're going to see, as the Bible tells us, chapter 35 and verse 10, there are two Jewish states out there. Well, they will come back and become one when the Messiah, Jesus Christ, comes. I just have to simply say this. The stage is set. All the actors are in place, as indicated by every single conversation we had on this broadcast today. And the curtain is about to go up on the final drama that will unfold in the Middle East. But let me quickly remind you, the next event, before these states divide, before there are two Jewish states in Israel, the next event is the rapture of the church. When Jesus shouts, the archangel shouts, trump of God sounds, and we are caught up to be with him. And according to everything we've talked about on this broadcast, in my look at the book right now, that rapture of the church could happen at any moment. So let's keep looking up until...